The following program is made possible by the friends and partners of GodQuest Ministries. Does it really matter when God made the earth? From the CTN studio in Pensacola, Florida, this is the Creation Today Show. I'm one of your hosts, Eric Coven, and I'm joined by Paul Taylor. And on today's show, we've got lots of information. We've got lots of exciting questions to answer. You've really been uh, pulling out all the stops, giving us some <laughs> yeah, fascinating have, questions to go through. And uh, so we're going to cover quite a lot of those during this show. I think you'll find out it does matter when God made the heavens and the earth, and that's the whole point. That's what we want to talk about. That's why our ministry exists. If you have questions, send them into questions at Creation Today. Dot org. You can also join us on Twitter, twitter.com slash creation today, or Facebook, facebook.com slash creation today, and even youtube.com slash creation today. got so many questions. Thankfully, we've got somebody with all the answers here to answer your questions on the Creation Today show. But first, we've got a couple announcements for you. Today's show is being underwritten by The Creation Store. You can visit them at creationstore.org. Hey, we did a conference not so long since, didn't we, called the Proof of God oh. Conference, which was great fun to do. It was a blast. And, you know, people have been saying, well, what do we do if we miss that conference? Well, we've got the answer, <laughs> because at the Creation <laughs> Store, you can get um, various products to do with the Proof of God Conference. You can get a set of DVDs. That's right. Or uh, you can get them on audio CD. And, and you, can even, you can even download them if you want. They're available in download format. I'm telling you, these speakers were in incredibly dynamic, very handsome. Uh, and then I was there as well. I got to speak with them. So that was, it was great. But six speakers, when you get it on DVD, you also get all 11 breakout sessions, which was incredible. It's a huge package and it's well worth uh, getting hold of so that you can really, as, as, it's the next best thing to being there at the conference. We just recently released Paul Taylor's brand new DVD series, The Six Days of Genesis. Paul, you did a phenomenal job on this series. If you've been watching the show, we did a series of, of episodes on the six days of Genesis, one on each uh, program, uh, on, each, on each lecture you did there, and it, it is phenomenal, absolutely incredible material. So I'm so glad you got that on DVD and, and got that out there for people to hear, because it was it's so good. It was fun to do, and it's really just trying to emphasize for you that everything begins in Genesis. That's where everything starts. <laughs> it really is. And uh, we've found, come across a, a very interesting website lately that so we've had some news about, and I want to share with you. It's called the Creation Science Hall of Fame. And this is not just another creationist website with creationist information. Uh, they've recognized the fact that quite often uh, many creationist scientists do not get the recognition mm -hmm. that they deserve. And this uh, uh, organization have set themselves up to, uh, God willing, to be able to build, build an actual hall of fame in a building in, uh, in northern Kentucky. Hopefully they're, they're, they're planning on it being not too far from the Creation Museum. So it's not the same organization as Answers in Genesis, but uh, you would be able to visit both in one day. Mm -hmm. But they've got a website together already, creationsciencehalloffame.org, and you can have a look there at uh, how they're honoring uh, creation scientists. In fact, our very own president, Mr. Eric Hovind, Ooh. has an honorable mention on that site. That wasn't impressive to me. I'm like, ah, oh, almost. You know what I was amazed with on this? How many creation scientists there actually are out there? That's what's incredible to me. So many people think, oh, it's just, you guys are just a fringe group. There are tons of people out there doing great research, doing doing lots of uh, scientific study to proclaim the truth of our mm. creator. And, and I absolutely love that. It's good to see there as well some of the important creation scientists of the past recognized, like uh, uh, Dr. Henry Morris yeah. and uh, Dr. 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 Wilder Smith, the only man <laughs> <laughs> I know who has three earned PhDs in different uh, scientific disciplines. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, getting to some of the questions, Paul, we have had some very interesting questions come in. I've been loving these because people really are interested in what is the truth about 
this when it comes to religion, science, the Bible, creation, evolution, and we're here to yeah. answer your questions. So we got a good one, don't we? Well, we, we are. I'm, we're very imp uh, interested in getting your questions, of course, right. by the way. You know, you need to send them in to questions at creationtoday.org so that we can have a look at them. And we love to see your questions. I have to say that in the last couple of weeks as we filmed this, uh, we've had some very interesting <laughs> questions indeed. And uh, let's, let's start with a, a shorter question, but I love this one. Uh, Edward says, I'm looking for a biblical world history timeline, something with color you can mount on a wall. Do you guys carry any? If not, do you have suggestions, websites, etc.? You know, I have discovered that timelines make a huge impact when people can actually see what you're talking about. I don't know if you ever had a history class where they didn't use timelines. It's not near as fun just memorizing dates, but when you see it in the scheme of all of history, it really helps things make sense. That's right. It, it's, they're wonderful things. And yes, we do have such things. For example, our friends at Answers in Genesis have produced this that we, uh, that we stock in the Creation Store, which is uh, a biblical big book of history. And this, uh, although it's called a book, Watch it's this. not I love really this a book. This, this is, is a 15-foot long chart of history. It is absolutely incredible. I mean, this is an absolute must for any uh, homeschooling parents, as yeah. I said. But, uh, you know, I think it's uh, good for adults, too. It's good for Sunday school rooms. And uh, they, they've uh, put this together from all sorts of historical dates that they have researched. What's interesting is that a lot of the research in timelines like that really come from a very old book indeed by Archbishop James Usher, who nope. we're going to mention later in the program. We don't claim that James Usher was inspired by God, <laughs> just so you know. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, we will talk about him <laughs> later, but look at this book, how thick this is. This is His work is translated into modern English in this book, uh, published by Masterbooks, and it's full of highly researched dates that Archbishop Usher did. But one of the interesting things is that another man produced a timeline based on this that work. work. And this is the Mac Daddy right here. Oh, yes. Adam's chart of history, which is republished by Masterbook Publishers. This one chart is 25 feet long, and it covers all of woo, all of history. I mean, it is just absolutely astounding. So it takes you all the way from the creation of Adam and Eve all the way to the 19th century, yes. showing the historical time frame on the top and then the secular time frame on the bottom, what's going on in the secular world. Yeah, Adams described this as a map of history. And from the distance where you are, you'll probably be able to see lots of colored lines because he's tracing all the people groups. And over towards the far left, probably in the section that's folded up at the moment, you can see where they all spread out from the Tower of Babel incident as they uh, spread out around the world after the flood and the Tower of Babel incident there. We've got the, the area to do with the flood there. And here's uh, here's where they begin to spread out At after the, the, the flood and so on. Um, you say you Babel, know. I say Babel. You say toma <laughs> tomato. Um, so hey, that's the best we can do as Vanna White here. Yeah. We, need to, we need to get one of those, I guess, to show off these charts. But Fascinating. The, the, the scholarship that he went into, he, he took a lot of information from James Usher's Annals of the World, and also what's often not known is that the famous scientist Sir Isaac Newton took Usher's work further and uh, produced a lot of interesting dates on that. Uh, Adams used his dates in there and then did some research of his own because this was originally built for a particular purpose. The last date, of course, in this chart is 1876. And of course, uh. you should know the significance of 18. 1876. 1876 is not significant. It's the 100th anniversary of the foundation of the United States of America. Oh. And so this chart was built for that particular purpose. You threw me off with 100th anniversary edition of. Okay, I'm going, what? 1776, America was founded. That's correct. 1876, yes. they did this as a commemoration Yes, of that. because at that time the colonists rebelled against the lawful royal authority. All right, here, <laughs> here's something I find fascinating, and this is just, we got to go to break here in a second, but this is just fascinating. World history goes back about 6,000 years. It doesn't go back in time, 50,000 or 100,000 or a million years. When you look at world history, it only goes back about 6,000 years from the first writings, from the first cultures, from the first languages. All of this pointing to the fact that God's word really is true. So, uh, Edward, thank you for your question. I hope that helps you uh, get some more resources that help you defend the truth of Christianity.
Welcome back. You're watching the Creation Today show with me, Paul Taylor, and with Eric Hovind. And that was a fascinating question, wasn't it, asking about timelines? It is incredibly interesting to me to see all of history only go back to the creation of the world. Yeah. That's what we see today. You know, we talk a lot about creation science, but it's not just science we're talking about. We know we talk about the biblical foundation for everything, but there is also creation history. That's and true. It would be quite interesting, probably even to do a show entirely on creation history. At some biblical point. history, what is it all about? We'll yeah. have to do that. Yeah. Okay, I'm looking forward to this next segment because just a little while ago, Pat Robertson got on his program and really yes. showed his cards on what he believes about creation. Absolutely. Well, uh, it was in response to, to somebody's question to him, and we thought, Pat, since you didn't do a very good job, we'll do it for you, buddy. Yeah, we've had a lot of emails about this, a great number of emails asking what our response would be to this. And of course, this uh, news came out a few weeks ago, and I, I posted an article on our website. That's right. Uh, but really, uh, the response that Pat Robertson gave on his show the 700 club was in response to uh, an email that he received and this is how the email read it was from a lady called Michelle and she emailed uh, 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 Mr. Robertson to say I have three teenage boys and now two of them are questioning the Bible this scares me they tell me if the Bible is true then I should be able to reasonably explain the existence of dinosaurs this is just one of many things they question. Even my husband is agreeing with them. How do I explain things to them that the Bible doesn't cover? I'm so afraid that they're walking away from God. My biggest fear is not to have my children and my husband next to me in God's kingdom. Well, first of all, I'm really thankful that she is heavenly minded uh, and not earthly minded with her question. She's saying, look, I want them to understand the truth about God, who he is, his word, the authority of scripture. That's something we talk about yes. all the time is look, without God's word, without this authority, we can't know anything at all. This is the basis for knowledge and understanding. It really is. That's right. Now the implication, of course, in the email, she's worried that the Bible doesn't cover dinosaurs. Right. Of course, the Bible does cover dinosaurs. We have talked about that on this show several times. Uh, but I think it's going to be quite instructive really now to have a look at what Pat Robertson actually said in response to this email. So we're going to listen to what he had to say and we're going to comment on it and what he said as it goes along. That sounds great. Let's roll that first clip. Look, I know people are probably trying to lynch me when I say this, but Bishop Usher, God bless him, wasn't inspired by the Lord when he said it all took 6,000 years. <clears throat> it just didn't. He's saying, oh, i got to stop it right there, guys. He's saying it didn't take 6,000 years yeah. uh, as far as uh, the creation of the world. I think what he's saying yeah. is it's not 6,000 years old, not it didn't take 6,000 years to, to form the world. We That's talked, the book he's talking about right we there. We talked about Archbishop James Usher, by the way. Um, uh, Pat Robertson demoted him just to plain bishop. He was Archbishop <laughs> James Usher. And uh, uh, he wrote this book. Now, do you assume then that uh, Archbishop James Usher had no actual evidence for his, uh, for his <laughs> proposition when he wrote such a big book? And, you know, uh, people talk about this 6,000 years that Archbishop Usher came up with. Pat Robertson is claiming then that the 6,000 years comes from Usher's book, not Correct. from the Bible. The point is, where did Usher get his figure of 6,000 years. Of course Usher was not inspired, right. but where did he get his figure of 6,000 years? The answer is, if you go through this book, the, uh, this book which even the atheist Stephen Jay Gould said was a work of magnificent scholarship, you will find that he takes those dates from the Bible. So the figure of 6,000 years comes from the Bible. Now then, Pat Robertson, are you claiming that the Bible is not inspired when the Bible clearly tells us that the world is 6,000 years old? Because that's where Usher got his date from. Yeah, there's no question we agree James Usher wasn't inspired, but he was talking about something that was inspired. It would be the same as me saying Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. Well, I'm not inspired, but I'm saying I'm quoting something yes. that is inspired. And that's exactly what James Usher was doing there. Listen to this next part. It's just a couple seconds long. Check this out. And you go back in time, you've got radiocarbon dating, you've got all these things. 
a cert there. From, yeah. You've got radiocarbon dating. He what says. is he assuming there? He's assuming that radiocarbon dating is what's dated the uh, the ages of dinosaurs. And of course, he's showing there that he doesn't understand what radiocarbon dating is because even evolutionary scientists don't use radiocarbon dating on dinosaur fossils. Radiocarbon dating, even if you believe that the world was a bit older than 6,000 years, radiocarbon dating would only give you an age of up to 100,000 years, nowhere near enough for the supposed alleged age of dinosaurs. So he, he really is not understanding the principle there in what he's commenting on. When we travel and speak, we try to educate people on this. Anytime somebody says, we know the Earth is millions of years old, or we know dinosaurs live millions of years old, uh, years ago, because of carbon dating, you know right away they don't really know what they're talking about. That's right. All right, listen to what he says next. The, 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 the carcasses of dinosaurs frozen in time out in the Dakotas, you know, they, they got sued, that big, uh, um, what was it, you know, the, the, the fierce one. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is it Tyrannosaurus? Yeah, the Tyrannosaurus the Rex, and, and uh, I don't know if this one had a, a female name like Susie or something, but anyhow, <laughs> they're out there. <laughs> He's right. They are out there. Yeah. I agree with him. There are fossils of dinosaurs. And by the way, for the Christians out there that say, hey, Satan just put those dinosaur bones here to fool us. No, that's actually not true. They really did live. We yes. talk about that on a regular basis. They were created in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. They really did live. They were on the ark with Noah, and they've always lived with mankind throughout history. I suspect this is what he's alluding to, uh, the idea that some, uh, unfortunately, some Christians um, erroneously have that dinosaurs didn't exist. Of course they existed. So he's saying they're out there, therefore that's saying that uh, the Bible's time scale is wrong. Not so. Right. Of course we have fossils of dinosaurs, but he's actually quoted the carcasses of dinosaurs. He is quite correct in this, that there are actually carcasses of unfossilized Tyrannosaurus rex bones that have been discovered. That's right. And this is actually a huge problem <laughs> for evolutionists and the millions of years time scale because such unfossilized uh, remains could not have lasted the millions of years that these dinosaurs are supposed to have existed. Now, evolutionists won't accept this. They're trying to w work out how these things could have been pickled or preserved over millions right. of years. But the obvious answer, Occam's razor suggests that you should always look for the most obvious answer. The most obvious answer is that these things are not actually millions of years old at all. He's using an evidence that actually confirms the Bible Correct. to try to say maybe it doesn't. All right, last segment here. And so there was a time that these giant reptiles were on the earth and it was before the time of the Bible. So don't try to cover it up and make like everything was 6,000 years. But that's not the Bible, that's Bishop Usher. And uh, so if you fight revealed science, you're gonna lose your children. And I, I believe in telling them the way it was. If you fight revealed science, you're going to lose your children, is what he said. Yeah, he's got a couple points here. He says, obviously the dinosaurs lived before the Bible, which we got a problem with that right away. That's The Bible says there was no death until sin. Jesus himself said the creation of Adam and Eve was the beginning. How can you have dinosaurs existing long before the Bible was written? It doesn't fit with the rest of Scripture. It sure doesn't. And uh, revealed science is when we're talking about science that you do in the laboratory here and now. Right. It's not talking about people's opinions about what they think happened a long time ago. That is not actually revealed science. You're going to lose your children. You are oh, going to lose boy. your children uh, if, if you actually try and undermine their belief in the Bible. You know, I don't, if I can just mention real quick, we got to take a break, but uh, I was recently asked to do that article for Answers in Genesis magazine. If you don't get their magazine, you really ought to get that. And that's exactly what uh, the conclusion is of, of the research that's done. Not standing on the authority of God's word is the real problem. Saying that this is not correct about God making all the animals, that Genesis 1 and through 11 is just kind of figurative, it's mythology. That's the real problem, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen. So I encourage you to check that out. We got more questions and want to talk more about this, but we need to take a break. We'll see you in just a minute. Join Paul Taylor of Creation Today as he discusses topics like dinosaurs and the Bible, creation or evolution, who cares? How old is the earth? Noah and the flood, and James Usher and biblical chronology. This set includes five CDs and a PDF study guide to go along with each lesson. 
To order this new series entitled Taylor Talks, visit us at www.creationstore.org. Welcome back. You're watching The Creation Today Show with myself, Eric Coven, and Paul Taylor. We've just been talking about Pat Robertson and the quotes that he made on the 700 Club, uh, denying the idea that the Earth is only 6,000 years old, kind of saying that young Earth creationists really need to educate their kids and teach their kids the truth uh, that science has come up with. And of course, that is not the truth. The truth no. is what's contained in God's Word. If God says that he made the world in six days, some 6,000 years ago, then uh, who who is, with the greatest of respect, who is Pat Robertson to say something different on that? And you no know, kidding. we do laugh and joke on this program, and it's quite right that we do that. We have a good time. But actually, this whole question, this whole issue makes very me very serious. angry. Yeah. And, and you know, I hope you'll, you'll forgive me for that. righteous anger. I hope you'll forgive me for that. And the reason why it makes me angry is because of this verse in Scripture, where it says, uh, Jesus says in Mark chapter 9, verse 42, whoever causes one of these little ones who mm. believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung round his neck and he were thrown into the sea. Now, I presume that the presenters of the 700 Club don't watch this show, but if they do, please point that out because we're saying with the greatest of respect that if that comment causes one of God's little ones to stumble, it would be better for you if a millstone were put round your neck and you were thrown in the sea. It really is a serious offense. Ken Ham has done research and published it in a book called Already Gone about yes. what the evolution idea, what the millions of years idea, what the dinosaurs living millions of years ago idea has done to the faith of the generation of kids that are growing up in church right now and yet believe in that. You'll see that they are walking away from Christianity. Two thirds, up to two thirds of young people that were brought up in good Christian environments as far as a, a conservative based church are walking away from Christianity because of their belief now in evolution theory. Yes, and you know, we've had emails asking what could we send to the lady who sent that email. Well, I don't know because we don't know who this lady is. She, she didn't contact this program. But uh, you know, if that lady, Michelle, is watching this program, I can assure you that if you get in contact with me, I will make sure that you get yeah. a, copy, a copy of uh, my series, The Six Days of Genesis, to give you a, a grounding on that particular subject. We do have the answers. Yes. That is, uh, that is the, the, just such a blessing to have those. We got another question here yes. we want to try to talk to you about right before the close Great of the show. One. You want to oh, ask a that super one? question this. Uh, Teddy says, I have an iPad and I went to look for an iBook textbook on the iBook store about creation science. The textbooks are usually really cool. Yeah. Uh, they have lots of ways to interact with the text. I could not find any textbooks about creation science. I think it would be awesome if you guys looked into this new technology. I would be thrilled to own such a textbook on my uh, iPad. He says, God bless you and thank you for your ministry. Man, I tell you, technology really has to come a long way in the last couple of years. It's really incredible what we're able to do with technology these days. It's very exciting, isn't it? And iBooks, yes, they are exciting, and I know that they're not there, but you've got to remember we are a small ministry, but yeah, we've got the vision there. Uh, I can uh, reveal to some extent that there is one thing we're looking at. We can't say exactly what it is, but there is one children's thing we're looking at that, That's right. uh, God willing, would be presented as an iBook. But, and yeah. we want to continue, continue doing things yes. in that. That's why we've got the Creation Minute app. You can get our app for the iPhone at creationminute.com. It's also available on the um, the Windows phone, but yeah. I don't think anybody actually uses those, do they? Not quite as technologically advanced <laughs> as the, uh, uh, that's right, uh, they're not quite as technologically advanced as the iBook, but we do have a number of eBooks and we're producing quite a few more that's of right. those to be able to give detailed uh, answers in an easy and very inexpensive form for you to be able Matter to of fact, if you go to creationstore.org, they are the underwriters of the program. You can actually just type in eBook and you'll get a list of all the eBooks that are available on the Creation Store there. And of course, there's so many other uh, technologies, aren't there, Eric? I, know, I was just going to say, Masterbooks has been very yes. aggressive. Yes. They are a huge publishing company of creation material. They've been very aggressive in getting this kind of yes. technology out there so that their books are available, like the iBook, with videos, with the interaction, because yes. it really helps and enhances the learning experience. Yes. That's the way we learn today. It is my understanding that. that Masterbooks do have a number of iBook projects. Uh, uh, 
are in the pipeline, so to speak. And of course, we've got the Genesis series oh, project in the pipeline. If you go to genesismovie.com, prepare to be blown away. I mean, yes. literally blown away. We are in the middle of producing Genesis chapter one through chapter three in 3D animation, where you're not just listening to creation take place, you're watching creation take place. I tell you, Paul, I was just last night, actually, I was working till a little after midnight, and I went over to the, the director, Ralph's office, and he pulled up some of the stuff that they are doing with the Genesis Project, and I just could not believe it. We, actually, we just released a new trailer, and uh, it'll be up at genesismovie.com. Uh, we've also got, uh, he's, he's looking at putting out trailers in 3D, where you can watch the trailer in 3D. It, it's, it's hugely exciting to be <laughs> Be able to, to see these technologies and you know we love these technologies that but at the end of the day we're talking about getting the word of God across we exactly. use these as media we'll use any media I remember the days because I'm so very very old <laughs> when uh, we had overhead projectors were and right. with acetate slides were the big thing that and even it. that there were people saying then well the Apostle Paul never used overhead projectors <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know my dad my dad would walk around or would, would travel around with 18 carousels <laughs> of slides that we, I mean, he spent thousands of hours <laughs> documenting and researching and making slides. And we always, if you wanted to add one slide to your presentation, we had a slide moving party where you set all the carousels up and then he wanted to put one right here. So everybody took turns. You started at the end and you just worked backwards from there. Did he ever drop them? I remember a colleague oh, of mine dropping a carousel of slides. I think slides. these locked in place. <laughs> oh man. Well, the creation store also has some great resources yeah. that go along with the program that we wanted to let you know about. We talked about dinosaurs, when they lived, a great resource is the truth about dinosaurs, Absolutely. an excellent yes. one talking about Believe it or not, the truth about dinosaurs. That's right. So it actually talks about that. Uh, one of the guests that we've had on the program before is Derek Isaacs, and his book, Dragons or Dinosaurs, is a fabulous one. And yep. this would be a great one to send to the 700 Club. Attention, Pat Robertson. We'll do that. You send one as well. And then, of course, Ken Ham's lovely book, Dinosaurs for Kids. I encourage you to check that out. Wonderful stuff. And if you've got some more interesting questions to ask us, then please uh, address them to facebook.com forward slash creation today questions at creationtoday.org. Thank right. you for watching the show. God bless you. Do you need the tools to defend your faith? Visit our websites for up-to-date content. Attend one of our live events and shop online at creationstore.org. We are Creation Today.